Welcome to TUI Business Bites. What does it take to make the world's fastest supersonic cruise missile and one that is compatible for the Army, Navy and the Air Force? That's right, we're talking about the BrahMos cruise missile that has been jointly developed by Russia and India. In this week's episode of TUI Business Bites, we have with us Atul Dinkar Rani, the MD and CEO of BrahMos Aerospace, and he's going to tell us about the indigenization journey of this cruise missile, its export potential and plans for future variants. Back to the show, sir. Thank you. Uh, so my first question to you is that how is the Make in India journey been for the BrahMos missile and what percentage of the missile system is actually indigenous as of now? BrahMos is 25 years. We're a young company. Uh, when we started in 1998, after the intergovernment agreement with uh, Russia, the BrahMos uh, aerospace was created as a joint venture between the government of India and government of Russia, represented by design agencies. Right. We had an eye on the market right from day one. Yes, design, develop a missile system, but with an eye on the market. We did our first trial in three years' time, in 2001. And in 2004, we got our first uh, order from the Indian Navy. That means in a small span of about five to six years, we had reached the stage where we could get into production. This was possible only because of two things. One is the vision of the then management of BrahMos Aerospace and the vision of the Indian defense manufacturing industries. Uh, A couple of the industries, public sector and private sector, actually stepped forward and agreed to put in money for their own enhancement Mm. so that they can work on the BrahMos missile. This would have been uh, actually exactly what one would call concurrent engineering. That was the start and the birth of the BrahMos missile industrial complex. So that's what making India is. Start working with the industry and producing within the country as soon as possible. We started with 13%, missile part of it 13%, very small amount, but uh, today we are sitting at 76%. This is uh, wholly, solely due to the help by both the design partners, BRDO and NPO Marsh of Russia, and the work of the Indian industries. Today we have more than 200 industries uh, working for us. We believe it's a a workforce of more than 20,000 people. the whole ground system is done, the launch systems and ground systems are done within India. So uh, we are just a step away from being fully self-reliant. But uh, Atmanirbharta is uh, a journey where it says that it's not necessary that 100% has to be. It is that we should not be choked or we should not be reliant on another country at any moment of time. Uh, Brahmo should be reaching that uh, soon, hopefully in another three years. So we are the flag bearers, the torch bearers, the beginning of the Make in India concept, especially in the idea of the military industrial uh, consortium. Okay. You spoke about how the industry has helped and it has evolved as the Brahmos ecosystem has also evolved. So how have the component manufacturers benefited from Brahmos journey? How has the technology transfer happened? Yeah, that's a wonderful question which I love answering. Uh, when we started, it was only the guidance system of the missile which is with us. Uh, I'm leaving aside the ground system because the ground system was already we were, uh, doing that in place. It started with the airframes. We, the missile is a very complex uh, missile, especially the BrahMos is even more complex than other missiles. We have composite airframes, we have metallic airframes, uh, we have of course the electronics. So. These industries came forward saying that we will invest in composite manufacturing or we will invest in titanium forging, titanium working on uh, in the, with the machines. So they have actually learned in the process how to use not only the imported materials. Initially, we started with materials being imported from Russia. We have substituted those materials with the materials available within the country alternate sources plus equivalents. Uh, The industries have actually played a very large role in this identification of processes also in uh, manufacturing. They have learnt a lot also uh, by metallic adapters, something which the uh, industry had never done before. We've gotten gotten into that. Uh, Working with the composites and multi-layer composites, the composite metal uh, fastening 
was another huge place where it was there but now we are talking about a system which is created and which stays like that for approximately 20 years and when you want to use it it works so that takes the notch up of technology a little more the industry has stepped forward and they have reached that stage okay. what is the strategic advantage of having the brahmos missile system in your you know missile arsenal oh uh, there is no parallel the brahmos supersonic missile has no equivalent in the world today uh, people do talk about hypersonics that's the future currently at as of today a supersonic cruise missile is only BrahMos. There are one or two others who uh, pretend to be supersonic missiles. I'll see, keep the word pretend. Uh, they are not supersonic. And uh, BrahMos has grown with the uh, necessity of the uh, our users, the armed forces. They kept saying, we need this, we need that, we need this change. So it has evolved over the years. And today it's a frontline weapon on all the three arms, Navy, Army, Air Force in that order and uh, proudly we can all say that India is the only country with a single missile with the three forces, a triad of a supersonic missile. It, it, it makes a difference. It's considered the frontline weapon by all the three forces. In fact, in our uh, recently concluded user meet, we had the uh, chief of defense staff, we had the air chief and the army chief. All three of them use exactly the same words. Brahmos is today a frontline weapon of the Indian Armed Forces. I think they called it the Brahmos. Yes, they use that. It's very scary to be called that. But uh, yeah, we have evolved into something like that. We are, we are the uh, solution for all uh, problems. And uh, for a missile like Brahmos, you've already received an order with the Philippines during the process of executing that. So, on what stage is it? And are there any countries other than the Philippines which have shown interest in Brahmos? And you could name a few for us. Uh, Jan 22 was uh, a very hallmark day for all of us when we actually signed the uh, contract with the Philippines uh, Department of National Defense for a show based uh, coastal defense uh, missile system. We are in the process of uh, honoring that contract, in the process of deliveries. It's a long-term process. Uh, it's just opened the doors not only for us, but for the rest of the Indian defense manufacturing industry. A lot of countries have been interested in Brahmos right since the day we did our first launch in 2001 and when we started participating in exhibitions. But uh, we are tied down with the fact that Brahmos can be sold only to friendly foreign nations uh, who are capable of handling such a potent weapon. That mm -hmm. is, that, that's that uh, is actually a, one of the things. Yeah. And they have to be agreeable to be customers of the BrahMos missile system if only the government of Russia and the government of India agree to. Mm -hmm. So that cuts down our numbers a little bit, mm -hmm. not much, but a little bit. And uh, we are in conversation with about a dozen countries right now. Who exactly, when exactly, which one first, uh, that remains to be seen because there's a lot of work to be done. It's not only that we sell, they buy. Mm -hmm. So when someone wants to buy something, they, they also have to go through a lot. But we are looking at all versions of the uh, BrahMos missile, the uh, coastal battery, there's a land launched BrahMos, the ship launched BrahMos, as well as the air launched BrahMos. Any one of them, any one of these 12 countries could come up first at any moment of time. We actually expect to contribute tremendously in that uh, target goal given by Honorable Prime Minister of 5 billion by 2025. We hope to, I mean, I did make a statement that Brahmos could do it on their own, but the current geopolitical systems have become such that we may not be able to touch the, uh, 5 in 2025, but we'll be a large contributor in that. Okay, that's great. And there is a lighter version in works as well, the Brahmos NG. If you could tell us about special yeah. uh, You see, we can't rest on our laurels of what we have done till now. The Indian Armed Forces have and they still have a requirement for uh, Brahmos, the current version. But with an eye on the market of the world, as well as an eye on improving the system. 
Uh, what was decided is we finished our preliminary design of the Brahmos Next Generation. It's exactly the same missile, miniaturized. It will have exactly the same parameters as today's Brahmos. Once you have miniaturized it, that means the size and the weight, weight is about half of the current Brahmos, we'll be able to carry more numbers of the missile on the same platform. And uh, immediately our eye is on uh, equipping the LCA with the Brahmos NG. Right. Uh, once we finish that, the LCA will be a potent platform for export. Just think of it, the light combat aircraft Tejas with two Brahmoses on under the wings right. and two Astra missiles under the wings. It's a total Indian platform. We would have broken barriers of uh, our history for our Indian defense industry. Okay, and any timelines on when that's happening, any testing? Uh, we're uh, doing our work. Uh, we are looking for uh, funds right now. Some funds have come in, but we are looking for more. It takes, takes, I mean, it's not only time and technology, it requires funds. Uh, we expect to do dummy trials, there is dummy drop trials, because we are concentrating on the air version first. Uh, we plan to do that by middle of next year. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to do live missile trials by the end of uh, next year or the first quarter of 2025. Take about uh, six to seven months, maximum uh, nine months for different trials. We won't have to do too many because the current Brahmos is already proven. So they'll be just sort of extension trials. And uh, depending on the orders from the Indian Air Force initially, uh, we hope to get into production by end of uh, uh, mid of 2026 and end of 2026. Mm -hmm. And we expect it to be large numbers, not just from the Indian Air Force, the world is going to be looking at this. Especially as you said with Tejas Plus. The yeah, well, the idea of looking at Tejas as a platform is that we have an eye on all the Western aircraft because Tejas is designed on Western aircraft design philosophy. So once we are able to prove it on Tejas, we will be able to put it on any Western aircraft also. That opens our market huge.